So I'm going to start um, by explaining what is actually our current pain in all the advisory issue. And then I come back and um, introduce CSAF as a solution. I'll show some of the available tools and I'll keep you updated on unsolved problems and future work, what we have to do, what is already planned. And I'll get you one slide of key takeaways so that you know what to present to your executive or, um, if you go home. So let's start with my first question. And Tracy will present that for us. Yeah, let me go ahead and I will take the share screen back. All right, everybody, um, if you point your phones over to Sleeto, or if you are in front of a desktop computer, you can navigate to sleeto.com and punch in the number 446725. I will give everybody like 20 seconds to do that. Wish we had some time music. <laughs> and we'll have to question there how many different vendors yeah. do you use in your company? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and move this and then um, we can post this poll up again as well. All right, so. And please vote. Yeah, please vote. Let me actually. Vote it. So I'm really interested in this question since that's actually one of the, the key parts here. Um, if you have one or two vendors, that's fairly easy to handle to, to look out for the advisories. But if you have maybe 20 to 50, it might get a little bit more complex to do that. Um, if you have hundreds of vendors, um, it might be mostly undoable. Um, so, but I'm, there might also be a, be a case where you don't really know how many vendors do we actually have in, in our companies. Um, so I'm, I'm not looking for a correct number, I'm just looking for a rough guess. So, and I think we give it one more minute. Mm -hmm. So please join and, and put in your yeah. results. I'm gonna try something real quick and see if I can show the results in real time as well. There we go. Oh, perfect. Oops. Sorry guys. <laughs> the workings so, of my desktop. That's quite an in interesting result. Um, most of you don't know, um, and 20% um, think they have less than 10. Um, so I'm, I'm really thrilled to speak to those people in the Q&A afterwards. Um, so. All right, oh, still moving. Uh -huh. Thomas, you just, you just tell me when you want, you want control of your slides back. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we, we take that. Um, Okay. As the first one, and please all right. join also our next question, um, which will be there in just a few seconds. So let me share my slides. You will exactly tell to the audience about the, what is the purpose of the, this poll, right? Thomas. So I'll, I'll come to that in just a second. Okay, thank you. So when we look at the coordination time frame, it is mostly a vendor becomes aware of vulnerability and he analyzes the vulnerability. So that's that's normal coordinated vulnerability disclosure stuff. And at some point he releases a patch and advisory. And at some later point in time, the asset owner does something. And this does something could be patch or mitigate risk or actively, actively accept the risk. And what we're looking at is, so our timeframe of concern is 
from the point where the vendor releases the patch or advisory until the asset owner does something. Since that's under the control of the asset owner, um, we think this, this time frame is way too long. So um, that brings me to my second question, um, which is basically, do you automate advisory handling? Um, Tracy, please go ahead. Sure thing. One sec here. All right. It looks like uh, people have already been skipping ahead. Yes. Yeah, so you can join Slido here. You can uh, point your phone and go use the QR code, or you can go to Slido.com and punch in this number. And you should be able to, once you get into the event, be able to see uh, Thomas's questions here as well. So the interesting question here is, if I have so many vendors and I know it's a time consuming process, do I actually already have some automation here? Do I have method and procedures in place which help me to, to automate these advisories and automate that against my asset um, database as well as have that automatically retrieved from the vendors. Um, we're still seeing some changes here. So I'm, I'm really interested in, since it's, it's changing so quickly, <laughs> um, but most of you at the moment at least think you wish there was some automation and that's actually the need CSAF addresses. Um, and I'll go over that in just a minute um, to, to show what we have found, um, what could be helped in here. And I'm, I'm really interested in the people who are saying yes, and it's great um, since I don't know um, such tools which are already available. So please come to talk to me uh, in the Q&A session. All right. Um, All right. We have one more question later on, so please be ready for that. And we just go ahead in the presentation and look into the process, how it's usually done. So if you have a manually advisory handling process, that's mostly there is a vendor out there puts out human readable advisories, for example, 15 advisories with different kinds of severity. And you can think of the severity maybe like a CVSS score. And then you go ahead, you search on the websites, are there any new or updated advisories? You download them all, you prioritize them um, by the criticality of the vulnerabilities and you might have your you're very critical upfront, and then it, it goes back until you deal with the low criticality ones. And then you do for each advisory one kind of a cycle, which is basically, do I have affected devices? If no, I don't care about the advisory, just scrub it off the list. And then do a risk assessment as a second step. Um, what's actually the risk involved with this? Is this deep down in my network? where I have plenty of, of defense and depth layers before that, or is it an internet facing device? And then you have to decide which actions you want to, uh, to take. And that's actually quite a lot of a process as it's not a one day job where you think, oh, I, I do this once a week or once a month, but vendors are constantly putting out such advisories. And you have to repeat this process constantly. So the first step with finding these, it is basically a mess. You go through all these websites and I just listed a few of them here. And then you have to analyze the stuff and it's all different formats, HTML, PDF, text files, signed, unsigned, um, and it has all a different structure. Um, but then the interesting question is, um, if I have to do this with, with three advisories, I don't care. 
um, how many advisories do we have actually to deal with? And that's a question which I would like to, to put on to you. And um, Tracy, please go ahead, share slide three. All right. Looks like we have some folks who've already answered it. So again, if you're just joining us, you can point your mobile device at the QR code, or you can head over to slido.com and punch in the 446725 to join the poll. And we are really looking for participation here. Please. Come on. <laughs> so that's, that's quite an interesting question. Um, since if you do that for say um, one advisory a week, that's probably not too bad. I can handle that. It's probably half an hour work for an advisory goes through all the different steps. But then still the question is, how do you get informed about the advisories? Um, how do you get notified about them? Do, re do I really have to, to look into um, all the websites every day so that I don't miss an advisory, which might be critical? Or is there any notification by the vendor which, which gives me um, some intel that there is a new advisory? And how do I find it? Is it behind a portal or is it somewhere um, where I can easily access that? And that's quite interesting. Nobody ha have 30 to 75 advisories. Um, <laughs> having said that, just one joined. Um, yeah, so if you're, if you're around zero to, to 30 advisories, I probably think you either have advisory handling is not, is not really your business or um, you don't have that many vendors to watch. That's perfect. Congratulations. Um, but really when you come to, to in the industrial space, it's, it's huge. There are huge um, installations and they have all these different vendors in them. And you have to, to look into how many vendors do I have there? How many assets do I have there? And where do I get all the advisories? And we'll stop there with the questions and come back to the presentation and give you some insights what we expect that to look like. Um, so as I didn't have a clear number of advisory, I just looked at um, CVEs since there might be a CVE. There, I, I know there is not for each advisory a single CVE, and sometimes there are more CVEs and more advisories. So, but it gives us an idea how it looks over the years. And if you look to that, and that's mapped out from, I think, um, so each dot is a year. If you look to that, it's actually rising constantly. Um, so, and it, we estimate that's an exponential rise um, in CVEs and also in advisories. So in the current situation, we have this existence of a readable format. And then we have to manually process that. We only need a web browser for that. And, and as a vendor, you can do that with Word or any text writer. Um, but really, if, if we want to have automation in that step, we need a machine readable format so that we can automate the processing of our advisories and that we can have some, some um, content management system on the vendor side, which actually produces this machine readable format and then gives us the opportunity on the asset owner side to have a smart search there and compare this with our asset inventory. Um, we're not at a point where we really have unique product IDs since you know from SBOM, naming is a hard problem. So um, we just start one step at a time and start to, to automate advisories with bringing in a machine readable format. And this machine readable for format is called Common Security Advisory Framework. Um, 
current major version is 2.0. It is JSON format. It's machine readable and it's really built with automation in mind. So we have all that coming in from having conformance standards um, down to how to distribute CSAF advisories. Um, standardization is done through the OASIS Open, which is also represented at first. And we have the CSAF technical committee there. Um, and it's actually, we always get asked about CVRF. CVRF is the um, predecessor of CSAF. If you look at an example, a CSAF document actually has three parts. So there is document level metadata with all your tracking numbers and your version of the advisory and the revision history and the title and some, some generic information about the publisher. Then you have as a second part, your product tree where you define all the products used later on in the document. And in the third part, you have the vulnerabilities listed as well to which products they apply and what scores apply to them and for this a remediation action which you should take there. This brings us to an automated handling process. And the vendor doesn't really change much. He just produces machine readable advisories and publish them. But now we as, as the asset owners or as the downstream vendors could go ahead and say, um, I automate these, this finding step. I don't want to search through websites and download that manually, that can be automated. And we get a, another big advantage here. We can have some automation in the search, do I have affected devices? So I can actually reduce the numbers of advisories, which I have to look into tremendously just by comparing that to my asset database um, in a structured format. I can add a static risk assessment um, so for example, advisory nine might be about um, an internet facing device. So that's really something which I want to look at first since I'm exposed to a potential threat from the outside um, by not having that vulnerability risk assessed. And there might be another vulnerability, say number 12, which is actually led way down in my network um, very much layer of defense above them before an attacker can go, get to them. So I might take an environmental score and put it uh, a little bit further down. So, and then I have the, the new criticality of my vulnerabilities and um, have that automated adopted. So now I have only, instead of 15, I've only a lesser number of, of advisories, say seven, which I have to look at, um, which are sorted by criticality. And now I only have to look into that and, and think what decisions do I want to take here. If you look in the CSAP specification, I want to give you a short introduction to that so that you find where you have, what you have in which chapter. First two chapters, that's introduction and uh, design considerations. And then all the schema elements of the JSON schema get explained. But unfortunately, we can't deal with all that in the, in the JSON schema. So we have some tests. Some of them are mandatory, which render a document invalid when you fail a test of them. Some are optional and some are informative. Um, just to let you know what's best practices um, and what could you add to make it more valuable to your customers. And then we have a chapter about how you should distribute the CSAF documents. Um, we also add as a it's, as it's standard in, in every publication, safety, security, and data protection consideration. And we add conformance targets. And these conformance targets will allow software vendors to describe that their product is 
um, a valid product against the standard and implements the standard and also gives customers the opportunity if they look for a software, um, just something like a vendor is looking for a content management system which produces CSAF documents, he has a way to go there and, and find the software. Um, we have Stackvisogram as one of the first available tools. It's already on GitHub and you can freely use that. Um, you see a picture of that here. It's basically click and, uh, and join um, the items into the JSON format. You have um, also a human readable preview of the machine readable format. We have a CSAF visualizer, which gives you all the structure of the document um, in a more readable way. And there's also something which will implement the tests at some point and it's called CSAF Lint. When I always say we have something, then the question is who is actually involved in the development of CSAF? And that's big companies, industry lad, um, from Cisco, Microsoft, Red Hat, Oracle, AT&T, Siemens, but it's also part um, like BSI is there. But to really make that work, it's, we need the, the support of the community. We need your support. We do have some unsolved problems, um, like the unique product identifiers. If you have a solution for that, please talk to Alan Friedman um, at SBOM. He's pretty lucky if he had a solution for the naming problem, and we will probably adopt that. Um, we don't have an, an idea of, of an API yet, so it's at the moment all file-based. We'll probably add that in a later version of CSAF. We're looking into an aggregator infrastructure and how that might develop over time. So at the moment, you would have to go to your 100 to 500 vendors or less vendors if you select, if you have less vendors um, and collect for each of them in a single instance, the advisories. But we have this idea that maybe national certs could use an infrastructure to provide it as a one-stop shop, all the advisories which they collected. We have also some ideas around um, how to solve configuration issues. So if you have a certain configuration, a product might be vulnerable. If you don't have, it might be um, not vulnerable. So that's basically um, what we are going to look into the next versions of CSAF. So here are the key takeaways. Um, the number of vulnerabilities arising and also is the number of security advisories. We need these security advisories to make our risk-based decisions. Should we patch? Should we wait? Should we accept the risk? Um, and since that's time consuming and, and also resource consuming, um, we should automate the boring stuff as automation as possible. So please take action. Request your vendors to provide CSAF documents. Provide CSAF documents if you are a vendor or if you're an industry organization to your customers to ease their pain. And last but not least, spread the word about CSAF. I'll leave more information for you here um, where you can find the specification and also Sequazogram, the tool I've talked of, it is not complete. It will uh, develop along the standard and we will make sure that you can play around with it, um, always having the, the current standard there. And that uh, was my presentation. I'm giving back to Rick. Thank you.